Don't like that money. So we did something pretty radical with our cap five renewal proposal, and we went with an entirely new conceptual framework. We knew it was risky, um, but it reviewed very nicely, both internally and externally, if you catch my drift. Um, and I want to give you all a quick tour of it because we're really quite proud of it. So we are a social ecological site. We're entering the second quarter century of sis urban systems work at CAP. Um, and social ecological is the approach. We are now calling it human environment interactions, right? And so those are the HE ovals that you see here. Um, we are working in CAP5 at three different spatial and process heterogeneity scales or levels as our social science colleagues like to call them. Um, so we're doing work at the parcel scale, which is basically at pe in people's yards. We're doing work at the neighborhood level, which is the, the neighborhoods that those yards are nested in. And then at the full regional scale, where for the first time, we're actually working with our local tribal nations as well. Um, and so that's the scale. The, that's one of the axes. The way in which we're measuring that, that spatial and process heterogeneity, you can see in all of those little words that are nested within the human environment ovals. Um, and then on the other sort of domain axis here, we have uh, processes that are purely ecological and processes that are purely social, right? And then the entire um, gradient of the mix of those two. Um, and along that same gradient, we're, we have a big focus on urban ecological infrastructure. Some of that urban ecological infrastructure is pretty much ecological, but some of it is completely built. And so that is our second gradient. Um, and then I'll wrap up by saying we, we finished up our conceptual framework by taking the very same two-dimensional uh, space and embedding our five research questions in there. So it's clear where they fit and how they overlap with each other. And I will let you take it over. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> So on to our scaling challenges. Because we work with the human environment system, we have what's called a people and pixels problem, where we use uh, remote sensing data. Sorry, into the mic. We use remote sensing data to study these human systems, but it's sometimes very hard to relate the human component to a pixel because people move around and they don't necessarily live in one pixel. And so kind of understanding those impacts through our remote sensing data can be difficult. So this was a paper from a while back, but it had a great figure that shows uh, this parcel scale that we tend to work at a lot with land surface temperature data from remote sensing um, kind of super imposed to there. And so what we're doing a lot is taking these remote sensing measurements from within a parcel, aggregating or scaling them up to the parcel scale. And in doing that, we, of course, lose a lot of that uh, heterogeneity that we're trying to capture in terms of like in your yard, is that shrub giving you more cooling than your tree over here? Um, and it also works in the other direction. So we've had a slew of papers that have looked at how the configuration of our green spaces impacts those surface temperatures. So we have kind of this larger, um, we'll call it like a patch scale. And within that patch is nested a bunch of pixels. And we're trying to understand how each of those pixels is being impacted by the size and the configuration of that larger patch. One minute, Dan, you took all the time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, then everyone will hate me. Uh, so quickly, uh, Dan just walked through this figure, um, but this, this is really complicated because in an urban system, we have lots of heterogeneity. And in our CAP uh, site, we actually have lots of different neighborhoods that have been identified where we're doing long-term social surveys. So the residents are getting a survey in the mail and they're filling it out and, and sending it back. And so we wanna be relating our remote sensing data to these social responses. These neighborhoods are in the red. Uh, yeah, so they're kind of the red outlines. And you can see there that they are widely differently sized. They are in all across the city. They are different socio-demographics. And so one thing that I have been um, kind of thinking a lot about lately in terms of how do we start to compare those is starting to embrace this concept of scope over scale. So scope in the simplest sense, we can think of it as the grain to extent ratio. So we have pixel sizes are our grains and those neighborhood areas are our extents. So what this figure is showing is that 
along that uh, y axis over there. We're keeping the extent the same of that green area and we're increasing the grain. And across the top, we're, we're keeping the grain the same, but we're increasing the extent. And what we have down that diagonal are areas that have the same scope. So their grain to extent ratio is the same. And what we see over here on the right is that when we start to look at some of those landscape metrics that we measure a lot, that configuration of the green space, the size, um, when we look at areas that have the same scope, our findings are more comparable. We get kind of like more replicable results than when we start to look at different grains or different extents. So kind of keeping that in mind as we are moving forward with these areas of different sizes and different uh, remote sensing platforms and how do we make sure that we're measuring apples to apples or comparing apples to apples in these places. Um, I'll leave you with this slide where um, we didn't want to feel totally left out from the, the communities and populations crowd. So one thing that we've also been thinking about is how do we take that on the ground or on the ground in situ measurements and scale up from there. It's not as simple as we've heard today of just taking the remote sensing measurement because it's photons versus you know something that's real on the ground. But we are starting to build all of these different um, types of platforms, right? Airborne, we have a partnership with Planet, so we have kind of very high res data. We've got our satellites, we've got more satellites coming on. So how do we start to build those relationships so that we can eventually go straight from the ground all the way up and not lose anything? That's it. Let's see.